Command Center is where we tell you their ongoing successes on the war against terror. It will give you a panorama. In the face of an ongoing insurgency in the North East. Good day. You are welcome to the program Command Center. Live from the Silverbird Television Abuja Studios, we will bring you an up-to-date information on the war against terror, crime, and criminality. My name is Amadin Uya and I am your host on this program. The recent arrest of, the not of, the recent arrest of over 200 uh, members of the notorious cult group, popularly known as Bado in Lagos and Ogun states of the southwest, has brought to the front burner the issue of community policing. With almost 180 million in population, Nigeria needs about 1.8 million policemen. If we follow the United Nations prescribed recommendation, which says one policeman is needed for every 100 persons. Today on the program, we have, we have the former commissioner of police of Kogi and Enugu states, Emmanuel Ojuku, in the studios. He was also a one-time force public relations officer and a delight of the press. He will be giving us an appraisal of the situation and an expert analysis of community policing and issues around its implementation. You can join the conversation by liking our Facebook page, STV Command Center, and follow us on Twitter via our Twitter handle, at Command Center 16. Stay tuned. Terrorism is not jihad. It is cruel, wicked, and man's inhumanity to man. Both Islam and Christianity abhor the killings of the weak and defenseless. There can be no development without peace and security. See something, say something. Let's give peace a chance. Welcome back. For those who are just joining us, we earlier said we have Emmanuel Ujuku in the studio. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's nice having you on the program. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> now, uh, the Bado Cult uh, group in Lagos, uh, that's, uh, they've been a menace. We know the Nigerian police force has arrested over two of them as of today, mm. with over 25 of them uh, declared wanted. The questions Nigerians will be asking, you have served in the police force, gave a greater part of your life. Uh, you, are, you have an expert analysis of crime, crime prevention, having served as former police commissioner, not just for Kogi, but two states. Mm. Uh, do you think the Nigerian police can contain this menace? Well, let's start from the concept of courtism. The na national law, Nigerian laws, prohibit secret courts. We allow freedom of expression and people gathering of association. But when it becomes a secret court, it's, it's a taboo. It's an evil, it's a crime in this country. The Badu court, you see, you see the way they, their name sounds, Badu means they're really bad, really bad. They have no place in a society they are not the only core groups we have. There are others. Now, the police has a duty under the law to protect life and property, prevent crimes. Whether they do it well or not is subject to public discourse because the public is a mirror of the police. But the police cannot act alone. There are no witches in Nigeria police where I sat for 32 years. There are no magicians there either. Police must cooperate with the public, the community which they serve, to make the society safe. There is a give and take. There must be cooperation and collaboration. 
So it's everybody's business, as we normally say, that security is everybody's business. So I, I remember clearly uh, when you became police commissioner of uh, Kogi State, you know, uh, there was that uh, public discourse that who will be able to handle Kogi State because of its proximity mm. and because they also had these issues of cult, cultism, which mm. was very, very common, especially considering the fact that Kogi was a confluent state. Mm. But within a short time, such attacks, we, we're no longer ahead of it. Mm. Right now, people are asking that for the state where the Bado, uh, the dreaded court group has gotten into, they are asking if the police should be criticized for letting it get to that state. Mm. Because just like I said, proving that the police had the capacity, you proved it in Kogi State. Mm. But in Lagos State, this has become a national problem. Yeah, when an issue raises its head, particularly its ugly head, it requires a critical analysis. You need to properly scan the problem, analyze it, get to its root causes, its root causes, who are those that benefit from it, what are the effects? Then begin to sort them out and begin to analyze them and begin to deal with them. Then you profile various solutions, alternative solutions to it. If A doesn't work, let B work. The police is still capable to do that. Kogi has been a test case. Kogi is, was almost a basket case. Kogi has so many issues. It's confluence state, confluence of good and bad, bad and ugly. Terrible. But the issues we are dealt with are managed by the police. Lagos can never be uh, a difference. The police in, Lebo, in Lagos, I'm aware that are up to the task, that are equal to the task of a society of bad elements, be they cultists, be they criminals, be they armed robbers, or whatever prescription. It requires a proper analysis of the cause of this problem. From my own point of view, I, I live, my family lives in Lagos, and uh, I've been a constant, vis a frequent visitor to Lagos. I do know when a problem begins to start, uh, you know, starts, uh, they may wave it off. Maybe it's a religious program uh, problem because we allow freedom of religion. We don't want to interfere with uh, what those who believe in animism or fetishism are doing. Is their, their own way of worshiping God. But when it comes to taking lives, and endangering safety and security, then the police antenna must rise to the highest. I believe they've done that. You rightly say they've got over 200 people arrested and a good number have been declared uh, wanted, the police has risen to the task. <laughs> but you know, the impact, the impact of the community getting involved in their own security can never be overstated. The public must be involved to solve that problem. Because it's a community problem, community will deal with it alongside the police. Okay, now, sir, uh, there are some who think that this is the best time to advocate for community policing. Just like you said, it's a community problem. The police, you said it in over 32 years, there's no witch and wizard in the police. They don't fly at night. They need the community cooperation. Mm. And we are talking about uh, a court group that you said have taken lives. It's clearly in the dailies. Mm. Now, when we talk about co community policing, many believe that if the federal government should lead. Do you think they're serious about community policing? Well, I do, I do know that the government of the day and of the days gone by have always believed that the members of the public have a role in their policing. That's why when policemen are appointed, they are posted to various areas, and then when the police go back to various areas, in, total, in 1984, so the police formed the, what they call the committee, Police Committee Relations Committee, whereby members of the community, you know, like minds, those who are good citizens, cooperate with the police to make their communities safer. By 2004, my way, the, the government of uh, Chief Olusegun Gong Basanjo introduced community policing in Nigeria police. What does it entail? It entails partnership. That means that the police cannot do it alone. God has given us five fingers. No finger can function alone. You can operate as a silo. You need the community members. You need to partner with them. We partner with them in the project of policing the community. Because it's our common problem. If you're a partner in a business concern, you share their pains and their losses, their gains, their losses, and their pains. As you contribute your money, your efforts, you watch over that company. What that means is that 
the community should watch over, as they contribute to their police, should watch over their police. It also includes accountability on the part of the police. You must be accountable to your employer. Before now, you must realize that it, the police used to be treated as teen gods. A lot of myths about the police, untouchable, the police are them, we are the we. No, 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 that's, that's not the way it should be. Every policeman is an employee of Nigerians. Every policeman is a servant of the people. Community policing allows people to own up their police. It's their creation. creation. They must own it up, fund it, take care of it, and where he makes a mistake, as a good father, you apply the rod. That's where it is. It means that the police should deliver service, quality service, at every point in time, having regard to the cooperation of the public and the goodies the public is giving to the police. That's what it is. So government is committed to it and are doing quite a lot in that regard. But there's a lot of input in there for the community to own it up and begin to hit the ground running. Now, I, I followed the arrest in Lagos mm -hmm. and uh, it was very spectacular. Uh, the members of the uh, Lagos State Rapid Response Squad, uh, the state's anti-robbery squad, we saw OPC members, we saw vigilante groups, they worked together to arrest these people because they knew the culprits, but the police had, to, had the power to make arrests and the power to contain them. Now, is, any, is community policing different from this act? They were now in sync together. Every member of the public has a right, has a power under the law to effect arrest of a criminal and they hand over to the police. You should not detain, but hand over to the police to investigate and do the, the, the needful. OPC, violente groups, these are informal police sectors, non-state actors that partner with the police to make our environment safer and more secure. They are duty bound. In fact, our constitution allows that every Nigerian has a responsibility to assist law enforcement officers in the maintenance of law and order. It is a mandate in our constitution approved by all of us. So when somebody cooperates with the police, partner with the police, as the OPC has done, or the group have done, they are only fulfilling their own constitutional responsibility as authored and agreed by all of us. That cooperation is fine, it's beautiful, we need it to be replicated. It maybe could have come earlier, but it is better, you know, later than never. I appreciate the efforts of everybody who has cooperated with the police to make sure these bad boys uh, are removed. They must cease from being a threat to life and property. They cannot be allowed to continue, not in Lagos and not anywhere else in this country. I know the Nigerian police are up and doing in that regard. I follow the, the trend regularly. Now, so from your experience and over 30 years in service, uh, you have talked about the importance of community policing. And can it exist to the present centralized structure or the centralized structure has outlived its usefulness in maintaining in the curbing of crime and criminality? Well, there are problems with over centralization of the police command. There are problems. Uh, some decisions, most decisions are taken by the IG in Abuja here. And before the thing gets to somebody in Nguru or somebody in my village in Oka, Karana, uh, a lot of a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of water must have passed under the bridge. It may have been uh, watered down, and the time may affect it. That's centralization. But I know with good communication, a lot of that kind of thing can be dealt with. Community policing is germane. It is necessary because the problem, the community are the ones feeling. The pinch. They have a problem. They know their problem. They will provide solution to such a problem. Because every problem has a solution. The police does not know it all. The police can never know it all. The police know some. You, members of the community, you know some. And then again, there are issues of priority. In my area, if you're talking about uh, maybe... Uh, farmers and uh, cattle rearers clashing. It may no, nobody, the policeman will ask you, what is that? It doesn't happen there. But in a community where it does happen, as in this case, in Badu case in Lagos, the Kururu area where these boys have faced out and caused them a menace, they, have, they know they have a problem and they want to have a solution. They will co cooperate with the police to get a solution.
specific to that problem. That is where community policing comes in. It doesn't really vitiate or you know reduce or affect the issue of centralized command that you have in uh, in the police formations. I know you may that may lead you to stay policing and all that, but these are issues to be discussed in the constitution. Okay, so we have states like Lagos launching the state neighbor core. Uh, do you think this can complement the efforts of the police in reading communities of crime? It's a work on development. The Nigeria police, which I know, has always encouraged informal sectors to come in. We know what, what has been happening uh, in the Northeast, where you have the civilian JTF. Uh, because it's force, force, they call it just stands for uh, JTF. But because force, 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 force. But it mustn't be force anyway. The issue is that members of the public who have relented, who know the terrain, who understand the local language, they know the forests, the bushes, and the deserts, they will cooperate with the Many policemen sent to Lagos may not be water friendly, some may be hydrophobic actually. But any proper Lagos man who is a Lagosian may be very close to water. If, as government has formed that group now, they will not cooperate with the police. If there's any area area requires that that they may have to enter water by boat or whatever, they will tell you the police will follow. The thing is that they must work together. We need such groups to be multiplied in every area area, but they must be subject to the supervision of the police, of the police. <laughs> because okay. we don't want to give. Uh, that's what a musician who call, who sang a song about power show. People want to show power wherever they are. They are. We don't want somebody to abuse somebody's human rights. Because over the years, we have seen abuse of human rights by violent groups and such informal sectors. We must cut them. We must bring them to order and cut their tail before they become a monster. Finally, sir, uh, the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibaja, has promised that a policy which presents a clear-cut modality for community policing will soon be out. Do you think this is coming at the right time? It's never late. It's been ongoing in Nigeria police. And I don't know governments may still like to fine tune it. We say work on development. That shows that government is getting more and more alert and alive to its responsibility to provide safety, security, and welfare to citizens. So whatever government is doing in with regard to making Nigerians safer wherever they choose to live or do business, it's a work on it's a plus. And we should clap for such government as they do so. Okay, uh, I, I said finally, but I want to ask one more question. Uh, you have talked about uh, state policing and community policing. Can you give us a clear difference between the two? Because we don't want our viewers to get, uh, you have said so much, we don't want them to mix up uh, these arguments in the public domain. What we have right now is a federal police where section 214 of our constitution said there shall be one police force for Nigeria, centralized control from Abuja, the capital, led by the IG, who has his commissioners and the rest of them down the line. When you have state police, you have a commission of police, or whatever them they call it, located in the state, recruit their men, train their men, deploy them within the state. If they need to go across from that state to another state, they may need to get contact or clearance from the other state who has his own commissioner, which is also under state police. So they are li just like that. It's issue of structure and uh, functionality. But can it affect community policing or can community policing still be embedded in it? Either way, the community must play a role in their policing. Because if you don't police yourself, actually nobody can police you. If the community cannot police themselves, nobody can come externally to police them. Police are coming to help you. That's why I say the police is your helper. Police is your friend. Whether state police or federal police, it remains your friend. It remains your friend in time of need because you must have need. It remains your helper because you cannot do it all. The police they have in the state or in the federal government as at the federal level as we do have now may have arms as they do have arms. State police may not have arms. We don't know these things. When the monitors are worked out, uh, if they are ever worked out, we know how they are going to operate. But they can never rule out community policing. You said it very clearly at the beginning that the police is a reflection of the society. And uh, in Nigeria, we've had this uh, notorious attitude of always being quick to point to the police. 
any wrong is done, forgetting that the police is a reflection of ourselves. Mm. How can Nigerians cooperate with the police to improve security, curb crime and criminality? One is to change our attitude to the police. Every policeman you see in Nigeria today is a Nigerian. There's no foreigner. And every Nigerian, every policeman comes from a village, from a hamlet, from a kindred, from a town, from a village, from a state. He belongs somewhere. There's no police boy. Every police person you see is a man or a woman. He must have been 18 years of age. Before 18 years, he must have been formed by the society that he left to join the police. And when he retires, as I've retired, you go back to society. <laughs> so the public needs to understand the police is their own police. Every policeman is a Nigerian. What affects Nigerians affects him. Nigeria has issues, we know. Sometimes they say corruption issues, we know. Poverty, we know. Malnutrition, we know. As it affects A, it affects B. So take the policeman as a person who also feels what you feel. We are not strangers. We have Every policeman has an equal stake in the success and survival of this country. And it will actually be an offense for any Nigerian to treat the policeman as if he's a foreigner, as if he has no stake. That's a criminal offense. So they should get to understand the police, what makes them tick, why do they do what they do, and why is there delay. You know, we have issue of funding. Yesterday you had it in the National Assembly debating how to get an alternative way of funding the police. Because the police is moving like a question of picking. No money. Malnourished, about to die. It's only a wicked man that will have a child and then kill that child. Let it not happen to Nigeria police. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Uh, you, you have heard it loud and clear from Emmanuel Ojuku. It was a delight having him on the program. Uh, he was a former police commissioner. Kogi and Enugu State. And we can tell you from command center, he performed extremely well. Very, very well. We are glad to have him and we hope that we'll still have him next time. You can send us your questions and comments uh, via our Facebook page, STV Command Center. You can also like, uh, you can also follow us on Twitter by liking our Twitter handle at Command Center 16. We're glad to keep the conversation going. Remember, Police is your friend. You, in curbing crime and criminality, every Nigerian must work with the police because the police is a reflection of the society. I remain Amadin Uyi, your amiable host. Do have a wonderful week. Command Center is where we tell you their ongoing successes on the war against terror. It will give you a panorama. In the face of an ongoing insurgency in the North.